edge of nations into the obedience of Jesus Christ. I'll give you the power over all your enemies. I'll give you the power over deceptive reasoning. I'll bring you into truth. You will understand truth. You'll know truth. And the truth will set you free. But you'll say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and it shall be done. Now, I, I don't know why he drew the illustration, but I have a picture in my mind of, of one fig tree is, is withered and died. And on the mountain is most likely many more of them. And Jesus now turns from, their focus is on one tree and he turns to the, the mountain in a sense that is the nurturing source of many more of these things. The, the mountain is my nature, my fallen nature. It's your fallen nature. It's, 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 the, it's the source, it's the fuel source of all of this empty, fruitless religion. And he says, if you don't doubt, you can say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and it shall be done. You can say, you can look in the mirror and say, hey, you, you're finished, you're over, over, get it? You're finished. You're not dominating my life anymore. I have a new life source within me. And so fear, leave me and go into the sea. Depression, go into the sea. Unbelief, into the sea with you. Selfishness, into the sea. Lying tongue, into the sea. Lustful heart, into the sea. All of it, into the sea. All this old dead fruit, into the sea. Religious garments, into the sea. Deception, into the sea with you. The whole mountain of you, into the sea. Be gone from me. That's my part. That's my part, folks. So get into this book and agree with God and everything that disagrees with God's nature in me. I simply agree and say, away from me. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the living branch, get away from me and get into the sea. You have no more dominion over my life. And then he says in verse 22, and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. All things. That's the, that's the fruit of the root of that whole story. It starts with the fig tree. It starts with religious deception. Has got to go. It's all got to go. And then he says all things. First we cast off. Then we say, Lord, I'd like to be like you. I'd like a heart of love. I'd like to know what it is to be a father, a mother, a brother, a friend. I'd like courage to preach the gospel. I'd like a willing heart. I'd like giving hands. God, I'd like a mind that sees things and eyes that see what I've never seen before. And do you realize that Jesus said, if your desire is to follow me in truth, all things will be yours. I'll give you a new mind, a new heart, a new spirit. You'll be a new creation. The glory of God will be upon you. And most of all, most of all, and last of all, you and I will have an assurance that the feet that come down the hallway for you in the last moment of your life belong to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 There'll be no surprise at the end. Hallelujah. The one you knew was coming. You didn't hope, you didn't suppose, you knew he was coming. Hallelujah. You knew those last moments belonged to God. You knew that the branch was coming to receive you unto himself. You knew because his life was your life. His heart was your heart. You had received the covering that he offered through the shed blood that he died, gave on the cross on Calvary. You had given up all hope except God's hand stretched out to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time to get rid of the leaves, folks. Get rid of the leaves. These things won't get you into heaven. Get rid of the leaves. I've had people sitting in this very sanctuary in adultery lifting their voices and praising God. Side by side, adulterers. Handmade garments that will never get them into heaven. If you're a thief, the scripture says all thieves dwell outside of the city of God. Read it in Revelation. If you're a liar, you're not going there either. Sew whatever kind of robe you want. You're not going. 
<clears throat> the leaves have got to come off. God says, I'm looking for a Nathaniel today. I'm looking for a man or woman without guile. He says, Lord, I want it your way. You can get through the deception your whole life. You can even sing in the choir. <clears throat> you can go your whole life, but there's one moment you will not get through, and it's the last five seconds of your life, folks. You'll not make it through. It has to be true. I want to give an altar call this morning. Sanctuary and Annex. Oh, beloved. The time is so short, if you only knew. The Annex, when we stand, you can stand between the screens. This is not a time to be heading for your car, folks. This is a time to get these leaves off. The Lord says, I'll open to you the windows of heaven. You'll see, if you will bend your knee to me, acknowledge me as Lord, as well as Savior. If you will confess with your mouth that I'm your Lord and your Savior and bend your knee to me in truth, I'll open heaven to you. And you'll begin to see God's supply. You'll begin to understand that the garments that you need are received by faith. Now, they're not given to those who want to go back and use them as a, a license to sin. That's a deception, folks, and the Bible warns very clearly about that. You, come, you don't come and get this garment so you can go back and enjoy your sin without pangs of conscience. That's called a reprobate mind. You get this garment to begin to live a new life, a new master. And once you begin to know his life, you wouldn't want any other anyway. Everything will just start to fade. But I want to give an altar call for every person in the balcony and main sanctuary and say, Pastor, I don't fully understand everything you said, but I feel like God has spoken to me. And I feel like there's things in my life that have to go. I've tried to cram these into the kingdom and I realize the dangerous game that I'm playing today. It's very, very dangerous to play games with God, folks. Very dangerous. He's holy. He's righteous. He's a God of mercy, but he's a God of judgment as well. Very, very dangerous. No more dangerous game in the universe you can play than to play games with the holy God. He's extended a hand of mercy. If you have any wisdom, you will take that hand and you'll cling to that hand and never let it go. You'll walk with him and agree with him. And he'll bring you into a life that you've only ever dreamt was possible and take all fear away. And you will know in your last days you will know whose feet are coming down the hallway for you. Would you stand, please? The Holy Spirit is drawing you today. Please meet me here at this altar. Just slip out of wherever you are. In the balcony, you can go to either exit, main sanctuary. Just come and meet me here. Every person who just says, Pastor, you've spoken to my heart. I've got to get something off of my life. And perhaps there's some here today, you've never, ever given your life to Jesus Christ. You come. You come. Come just as you are. He'll give you, he's going to hand you a new garment. But you have to be prepared to take off the old one. Hallelujah. Just make your way and please move in close in the balcony. Just make your way here in the annex. You can stand between the screens. We're going to worship for just a moment. Then we're going to pray together momentarily. for this is a holy moment and for, for some this is the moment of your salvation it's the moment where an old way of living is put away and all attempts to reach heaven in your own strength you've realized today are foolish you, you're never going to be able to do it and today you, you have to re you've realized that I've got to reach out and take the hand of God it's the only way back into life. God stretched his hand out to me on the cross, paid the price for my sins. An innocent man suffered, was beaten, and died for the wrong things that I've done, even the religious deception that I've committed against God. And today is the day of your salvation, if that's truly and sincerely in your heart. And for others, you've, you've reached out for an assurance 
because there's something in your life that you've been hanging on to. There's a covering that you've placed over some sin. And the Lord is saying, I want to open heaven to you, but you have to be without guile. You have to be without deception. You can't come trying to deceive me and expect me to open heaven to you. You have to be honest. Hallelujah. And I can see that conviction of honesty on many of you here today. I see couples, I see individuals gripped by the Holy Spirit of God. And this is where conversion. To be saved, you are giving up the rights to your life. You're giving them to God. That's salvation, folks. It's not a prayer that you pray to make you feel good and go out and just live the way you want to. You're, you're giving the rights to your life to God. He is going to buy you with his blood, as the scripture says. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for loving me in all of my deception and my foolishness and rebellion. You've kept loving me. You stretched your hands out to me. Today, my God, I receive your offer of eternal life into my heart. And I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. I bend my knee to you. Your ways are higher than my ways. I confess with my tongue that you are not only my Savior, but you are the Lord. You are the absolute Lord of my life. I thank you, Jesus, for receiving me. God, help me to walk with you and to honor you and to know your power and your promises all the days of my life. I'd like us to seal this with a worship song, if we could. And after the service today, downstairs, lower rotunda, the, the back of the, lo the lobby, we call it the rotunda. Beneath that is the lower rotunda. There are people there that will pray with you. If you're not, it's the Holy Spirit who gives you witness that you're a child of God, folks. I, I'd love to be able to say you're saved, but really, I can tell you what you have to do to be saved, but the Holy Spirit gives you the witness that you are a child of God. and You must not leave this house until you are absolutely sure of that, until you know that you've been born again by the Spirit of God. God's Spirit gives the witness. When, when things are right, if you have to sit in your seat and pray, if you have to go downstairs and pray, you make sure you get this thing right. You make sure when you know here, leave here rather, that you can raise your hands in the air and say, I belong to God. God belongs to me. Heaven is mine. Make sure you know this. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the glory of Christ in our midst. Thank you, Lord, that the preaching of the gospel still does what the preaching of the gospel has always done. Lord, the preaching of the cross is the power of God for salvation. I pray, Lord, this day, you finish the work in every heart. And don't let the devil steal the seed of life and hope out of any heart that's gathered at this altar today. Satan, you're a deceiver and a condemner. We stand against you. I stand against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I command your voice to be silent. God has stretched his hands of love out to these who have responded. He's willing to receive all who come to him in truth. Father, I pray God, seal the work, Lord. Don't, let the, don't make church attenders at this altar, but disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Christ. Father, we thank you for it. God, with all my heart, I thank you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Now, we're going to just sing one more song, and as we do, Take a moment, especially those who are standing in the aisles and at the altar, just take a moment. Let what you've done today be deeply sealed in your heart. We have new believers classes here every Friday night. If you're truly converted and you're not visiting from out of town, you should get to one. If you are visiting, find a Bible teaching, Bible believing church and get into the new believers class. This is a new life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.